Okay, so this is uh, the Thursday lab, uh, section six. I'm gonna go over the test. Um, okay, so the first question uh, said, I mean, you gotta read these questions carefully. It's not saying just what's the launch velocity. We're launching a ball in three different ways. It's saying which one's the best also. Okay, so you, you kinda have to read the question correctly. For the first case, the ball is fired straight up comes back down and the uh, the lab person records a time of 0.6 seconds so we'll have t equals 0.62 seconds and so how would you calculate the velocity well what's the time to get to the highest point it's half that and then you can say uh, v equals v naught minus gt and the final velocity is zero and so the initial velocity of solving for that v zero equals gt so this is going to be 9.8 times 0.31 seconds, and that gives me 3.03 .03 meters per second. The next method, um, you shoot it horizontally and you measure the, uh, the two distances. Um, this is a problem that we did in class, so like that. So I measure y, I measure x. Uh, I can get the time from the y coordinate uh, with y equals uh, one half gt squared and then I can get the since I shot it horizontally v0 is going to be uh, x over t uh, and at solving t from there and when you do that you get 2.4 meters per second uh, and the last case is the same idea but different measurements where you uh, measure x in time of 0.31 seconds and you get the velocity of just v equals x over t, and you get 2.42 seconds, meters per second. So the question is, which one is the best? Um, so from the lab, this one is the best value. Why? Because how hard is it to measure y and x? It's not hard at all. You'd have some uncertainty in there and some fluctuations, but trying to time 0.6 seconds with the stopwatch or 0.31 seconds with the stopwatch as you did that in class, it's you're going to get widely different answers. So that's not a very uh, reliable answer. Even though this one's as close to that, a lot of people said, oh, they're close, therefore it doesn't matter. This one just happened to be close by chance. Okay. Um, you know, you, you, ran, you click in that stopwatch and you may get a value that, that gives an okay value, but it doesn't mean that it's a good method. This is a much better method. Okay, next question. Uh, and here I gave you some uh, mass and volume data. And I want you to find the density from a graph. So density is mass over volume. So I could write this as uh, mass equals uh, density times volume. So that's a function like y equals slope times horizontal. So if, if I put this as mass and volume, and I get data and I plot it, I can find the slope of this line. And uh, if I use the slope in the units in grams and cubic centimeters, um, you get a slope around 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. And since I'm plotting mass versus volume, that would be the density. That's all, that's all there is. That's it. Just uh, practice in making a graph and find the slope and relating that slope to something. The slope does have units. It's change in this over change in that. So it would be units of grams per cubic centimeter. Or you could change it to kilograms and cubic meters. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay. The last one has a car and a ball and they're one's constant velocity and one's uh, accelerating on a ramp. And so the first question is, make a sketch of when they would meet. So here's the car. It's just going to have a slope of uh, 1.2 meters per second. Um, but the sketch, you don't have to put that on there. Now the ball starts out at rest and it's going to increase in speed, and so it's going to look like this. And so at some point after when they started, they'll meet again. 
And that's the point we want to find. So the, the next question is, where and when does it catch up? So I can write down an expression for this car, I'll call that x1, it's just going to be 1.2 meters per second times t. That's your constant velocity expression for, for that. So at t equals 0, it's at 0. For the ball, it's going to be x2 equals, um, it started at x equals 0, and it started with initial velocity of 0, so it's just going to be 1 half times 1.2 meters per second squared. I gave those two the same numerical value just for no reason, just for fun, uh, t squared. Now I want to say, when are these two things equal? x1 equals x2, so I get 1.2 t equals 1 half 1.2 t squared. I'm sorry, yeah, the 1 point, so I get 1 equals 1 half t, t equals 2 seconds. When does that, so that's when they meet. Where do they meet? Well, now I can put that same time into either one of these functions, and I get x1 equals 1.2 times 2, 2.4 meters. What about this, calculate the time that the car has the same speed as the ball? Well, the speed of the ball, the car is constant. What about the speed of the ball? V equals v naught plus a t. That's the expression for the speed. So I want to say uh, it starts at rest, zero. So this is 1.2 meters per second equals 1.2 meters per second squared t. So t equals one second. They have the same speed. So here they don't have the same speed. They have the same speed down here. That's it.